Okay, never lost? Ever, ever. Ever. Okay, I didn't want to make sure. Okay, final thoughts on the Vietnam War. Number one, according to Ms. Lemkes, the Vietnam War was the first foreign war ever lost by the United States. That's correct. Patty, what was our second final thought? The financial cost of the Vietnam War was $109.5 billion. Incredible amount of money. How about the third one, Delancey? Well, how about just American casualties? And give me an example of the KIA on, on, the, on, on the final thought. We're talking about Americans here. How many Americans were killed in action? Approximately. I'll even get you. I'll give, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a word approximately. How many Americans? Yeah, in it, killed in action. Names on the Vietnam Wall. Fifty-eight thousand two hundred sixty-seven. Okay, and that including that is, that is including the missing that were identified. Okay, give me another shot here, Delancey. How many wounded in action? Mm -hmm. Three hundred three thousand six hundred forty-four. Forty-four, and th of those three hundred three thousand six hundred forty-four, Keaton and Jessa, one hundred and fifty-three thousand three hundred three were hospitalized, which tells you that they were wounded more severely than the others. So more than half of the wounded in action required hospitalization, which meant their injuries were more serious. And then 1,711 missing in action. And who was the last American casualty in the Vietnam War, Mr. Miller? He is absolutely. He is absolutely. Oh, I, I saw that backpack. It looked a lot like him. Pennington. How many missing? How many? No. How, who was the last American casualty in Vietnam? Uh, William B. Noel. Oh, okay. Girls, what are you doing here? She dropped something. Well, let's key in, shall we? Miss Soderstrom, tell me about the prisoner of war situation. Um. The first person went from 61 to 62 and was only there for six months. The last person um, was released in, I don't, I don't know what they were. 1973. 1973, and then the longest held was for almost nine years. Almost nine years. So, and we don't know in the POW situation if we've got them all back or not. It's just very difficult to, to know. Okay, that'll move us to our fifth example of final thoughts on the Vietnam War. And that was Vietnam veterans. Vietnam veterans. Okay? They suffered long after the war more than any other soldier in any other conflict. And there's some reasons why. And I'll talk about that. So many Vietnam veterans suffered long after the Vietnam War. They suffered depression, anger, and unappreciated feelings, those types of things, which led to some problems in their personal lives. So number five, many Vietnam veterans suffered long after the war because of things like depression and anger and a feeling of ungratefulness. And it led to some really, it led to, to uh, seven examples of what they experienced when they got back. Now, Bert, can you tell me maybe one thing that, that uh, Vietnam veterans uh, suffered from? Uh, other than, I said depression and anger and, and a feeling of unappreciation, what did that kind of lead to in their personal lives? Drug and alcohol use, abuse, a use and abuse. So drug and alcohol abuse was large among Vietnam veterans that returned. Drug and alcohol abuse. What else might be a personal problem they might have, Emily, because of depression, anger, and that feeling of ungratefulness? Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, yeah, but what, tell me what that might lead to. Some, what kind of problems would that lead to? See, drug and alcohol abuse would be a problem that would lead to. What else? Could they get new jobs? Joblessness and unemployment, very good. Joblessness and unemployment. So she's talking about uh, what Vietnam veterans ex experienced when they got back, which was what again? You said it. Oh, which one? The big one, the big one. The big one, post-traumatic stress, post uh, stress syndrome, which led to these types of things. How about another thing it might happen? Jessa, what do you think? Could be some examples, some personal problems Vietnam veterans might have experienced because of their depression, anger, etc. Suicide. Suicide. Very good. Yeah, suicide. That was an issue. So we have drug and alcohol abuse. We have joblessness or unemployment, and we have suicide. Keaton, what's another thing maybe Vietnam veterans experience personally because of their stress? Being homeless. 
Um, that would kind of go with joblessness and unemployment. It's good. How about another thought? Okay, Shelby. What problems do people have today? You could maybe think comes from stress. Divorce. divorce. High divorce rate. Thank you. High divorce rate among Vietnam veterans. So we have high divorce rate, drug and alcohol abuse, suicide, joblessness, unemployment. What else might they suffer? A lot of them suffered just because of the amount of Agent Orange it was dropped on. Health problems. A lot of them faced serious health problems. And what's the other side of problems you can have if you're not healthy? Physically, you might not be healthy mentally. So mental problems was another issue they had. And if you have divorced your wife, you have drug and alcohol abuse problems, you're thinking about suicide, you have no job, you've got mental problems, you got health problems, what might that lead you to do? Homicide. What? Homicide. Criminal activities or violent crimes. Very good. Criminal activity or violent crimes. So, again, under number five, many Vietnam veterans suffered long after the war because of depression and anger and a sense of unappreciativeness. And some examples of problems they had were high divorce rate, drug and alcohol abuse, suicide, violent crimes, joblessness or unemployment, mental problems, and health problems. Okay, number six, lack of appreciation by the American people toward the soldiers who fought in Vietnam. Okay, that was a serious final thought of the Vietnam War that was not positive, that there was a, there was a very serious lack of appreciation on the part of American people toward those soldiers that fought in Vietnam. When people come back from World War II, were they, were they treated well? You bet they were. Ticker tape parades, the whole nine yards. Same thing with other, every other conflict we were in. When these soldiers who fought in Vietnam came home, they did not get that. Why do you think that the, the, the efforts of the veterans of Vietnam was ignored and not appreciated? What might be a reason? Well, um, yeah, that we lost, but all the protest and criticism about the war put a damper on why we were over there. And soldiers, even though they put their life on the line, and they, you know, that they had sacrifices and came back with these issues, people didn't appreciate them, mainly because people didn't view it as a war we should be in, and we did not win. Okay? So these, you know, there was no appreciation. Nobody went up to a Vietnam. You know the best thing you can do, if you ever have a chance, is if you know that somebody is a veteran, and you know especially that they fought in Vietnam, if you took two seconds and walked up to that person and said, hey, I appreciate everything you do, have done to protect my freedom, you would not believe. You would get, we will leave a plaque at the Vietnam Wall that states that this, the kids in this class appreciate the sacrifice that was given on the part of the Vietnam veterans to secure our freedom. And we will put that on the Vietnam Wall and leave it. And then we'll stand back and we'll watch people for 15 or 20 minutes walk by that. And the emotions, especially if you have a veteran that served in that conflict that comes by and sees that. Nobody appreciates that, and we need to do that. We need to think of veterans that fought in any war, but especially the ones in Vietnam. Because it was not their fault that people were against that war. It was not their fault that people didn't like the war and that then we didn't win it. They went over and sacrificed, and they see we get no appreciation. If you ever get a chance to do that, that would be good. Okay, the seventh and final thought process on final thoughts of the Vietnam War is that the Vietnam War simply left a bit, very bitter taste in the mouth of all Americans. Okay? The Vietnam War left a very bitter taste in the mouth of all Americans. The Vietnam War left a bitter taste in the mouth of all Americans. When did, did we question going to war in World War I? Did our people question doing that? No, we question World War II. Not very much. No, God, I mean, there are people being killed all the time. Those people that hit the beaches of, 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 of those islands in the Pacific, like Iwo Jima, knew they were, didn't even get, why, ever watch Saving Private Ryan? Yes. Those guys, those soldiers didn't have a chance to even get out of the vehicles. They knew that where there was a chance. They were willing to do that. Korea was a little bit, we were wondering, because it was comparable to Vietnam, if you know anything about that, it was North Korea and South Korea, the same type of philosophy. But when you really think about it, nobody has any trust in our government sent us to war as much as they used to. People question it all the time. It started right here in Vietnam. It was a tough war to fight. Was it smart to be in it? I don't know. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. In reference to the bitter taste, 
In March of 1971, Congress adopted the 26th Amendment to the Constitution. Okay? In March of 1971, Congress adopted the 26th Amendment to the Constitution, mainly because of some of the bitter feelings about the Vietnam conflict. Anybody know what the 26th Amendment to the Constitution did? This is making a... 18 year olds little vote. It lowered the voting age to 18 in both federal and state elections. It would give an opportunity for 25 million more Americans to vote as a result of that. And they did that really for two reasons. Okay? So the 26th Amendment to the Constitution lowered the voting age to 18 years old in both federal and state elections. And at that time, it gave 25 million more Americans the opportunity to go to the polls. And for two reasons. Why did Americans want to go to the polls at 18? What would be one reason? If I can fight it. If I, they're going to send me to fight in the war in Vietnam or anywhere else, I should at least have the ability to vote for the people that might send me there. And two, it gave people, young people, a chance to vote basically for leaders to stay out of war even if they weren't going to serve. Because not at that time, females didn't get drafted and go to Vietnam. But a female who was 18 could vote, so maybe her brother who didn't have to go to Vietnam. So it gave young people a voice in their government that if, like, like Burke said, if I'm going to go to Vietnam, at least I want to be able to vote on the person that's maybe going to send me there. And two, I want to have some more... Uh, ability to vote on what goes on in this country at a young age because I'm the one that's probably going to serve the country at that point. Okay, any questions on Nixon and Vietnam? That's just kind of how it ended. Okay, now in summary, when you think back, events of history changed. We'll kind of go back to the Kennedy years. We talked about the Kennedy years. Probably John Kennedy made it pretty clear, did he not, that he was not going to get involved in Vietnam? And you really wonder if he doesn't get assassinated where Vietnam goes because Lyndon Johnson escalated the Vietnam War unbelievably. Okay, then when Nixon got in, he had a mess to inherit, and then he goes into Cambodia, which in general wasn't a horrible idea, but it led to more serious protesting problems. So we spent all that time in Vietnam, basically from 1961, even in, even 59, because Eisenhower sent the first advisors, from 1959 to 1975, that's a long period of time, and what did we get out of it? 58,000 Americans killed, 303,000 Americans wounded, 1,700 missing in action, and a stalemate at best. And really, did it accomplish any goal that we were looking for at that time? Not really. That's why it's so controversial, and that's why you hear so much about it. If you're more interested in the Vietnam War, I have a whole series of textbooks. You certainly are welcome to check any out. The Vietnam experience, it's everything you could ever want to know. It's a hard war to teach because of the battle and how it was fought so much differently than specific battles and wars as you saw before. Okay, we're going to walk in now to the year to remember 1969, and I'm going to tell you three significant events that took place that impacted the decade of the 60s. And the first one is July 1969 on your on your sheet, another Kennedy tragedy. Okay, July 1969, another Kennedy tragedy. Uh, for the first, this Kennedy tragedy will not affect the Kennedy family in, as far as life or death, but it will another family. On July 19, 1969, July 19, 1969, Senator Edward Kennedy of Massachusetts was involved in a tragic accident at a place called Martha's Vineyard. Okay. On July 19, 1969, Senator Edward Kennedy was involved in a tragic accident at Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. I've got to spell this for sure. What happened is Senator Kennedy was driving a car that plunged off a bridge into the Chappaquiddick River outside of Martha's Vineyard. Senator Edward Kennedy was driving a car which plunged off a bridge into the Chappaquiddick River near Martha's Vineyard. He had a passenger in his car by the name of Mary Jo Kopechny. 
and she was killed in that accident. So on that date, July 19, 1969, Senator Edward Kennedy of Massachusetts plunged his car off a bridge into the Chappaquiddick River near Martha's Vineyard, killing his passenger, Mary Jo Kopechny. Where was the Chappaquiddick River? It was in Martha's, Vin by Martha's Vineyard, which is in Massachusetts. Martha's Vineyard is an island, though. It is. They have to have a bridge from that island to get to the mainland. And they, maybe many, many bridges. Okay. Okay. Well, you got to get there somehow. I've been there. Oh, well, have you ever, did you fly in? <laughs> no. You got to take a boat. Okay, well, anyway. Now, this girl was very young, and they were driving from a party. It was kind of a cookout party, barbecue that was attended by members of Robert Kennedy's presidential campaign staff. So people that supported Robert Kennedy during his campaign for the presidency, during the time he was assassinated, were having a party, kind of a party cookout. Unfortunately, the members of Robert Kennedy's staff that were at this cookout, I don't know if it's unfortunately, but they were all females, and they were young. And they had a nickname, they called them the Boiler Room Girls. Okay? So, Mary Jo Kopechny and Senator Kennedy were driving from a party barbecue that was attended by members of Robert Kennedy's presidential campaign staff. The members at the party were all female, and they were referred to in history as the Boiler Room Girls. You can take whichever, whatever you want out of that. The problem with this whole thing is Senator Kennedy did not report the accident until the next morning, over 10 hours after the accident. Okay, Senator Kennedy did not report the incident until the next morning, some 10 hours later. Not good. When asked about the situation, he stated that he had made an effort to rescue Ms. Kopechny, but his rescue efforts were unsuccessful. So he stated, after reporting the accident, that he had made an effort to save her, but his efforts were unsuccessful. Now, when you think about that, He's going to be charged with something. What do you think he's going to be charged with, Karen? I mean, manslaughter. Not, yeah, it could be, certainly manslaughter. Here's what he was charged. He actually pled guilty to this. Leaving the scene of an accident. And he was given a two-month suspended sentence and placed on probation. So for this incident, Senator Kennedy pleaded guilty to a charge of leaving the scene of an accident and was sentenced, a two-month jail sentence, all suspended, and was given a year's probation. Now, what do you think the public sentiment was to that? Pled guilty to leaving the scene of an accident, got two, year, two months in jail, all suspended, and placed on probation for a year. Needless to say, the public sentiment was that Kennedy received a very, very lenient sentence for what had happened, because you guys said he could have certainly been charged with manslaughter. Well, finally, on July 25, 1969, he decided to do what Kennedys do. He addressed the people of Massachusetts on a televised speech. And he gave the speech from his father's library in Hyannisport, and he announced four things to the people of Massachusetts. So he's getting a little heat over this. 25th of July. He kind of got one ahead of the other, but... He actually pled and was sentenced after this. But on July 25th, 1969, his daddy pony, or they, pony, they pony, ponied up some money, got some televised time, and he spoke to the people of Massachusetts, telling them these four things from his father's library in Hyannisport. One, he announced and tried to explain his attempt to save Miss Kopechny. Okay, he announced and tried to explain his attempt to save Ms. Kopechny.
What else might he have to address? Why he left? Maybe, kind of. Because why do you think he left? Because he was gone. Well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Left with a 20 year old girl. Huh? Yeah, he, he denied that he had an improper relationship with the girl. That was the second thing he stated, is he denied any improper relationship with her. Because they didn't take the most frequently used route out of there. They took kind of a back route. What else might he have to deny? That he was drunk. He denied that liquor was any impairment to the accident. He denied that liquor or alcohol, they used to be more referred to as liquor in those days, he denied that liquor was any impairment that led to the accident. And the fourth thing he admitted to is he did say he had a few beers along with a couple of rum and cokes earlier in the day, but he was not drinking during the barbecue. So the four things he told the people of Massachusetts is he announced his attempt to save Miss Kopechny. He denied any improper relationship with her. He denied that liquor was any impairment leading to the accident. And he admitted to having a few beers along with a couple of rum and cokes earlier in the day. Okay, what would be another issue people might think that maybe he should do because of this poor judgment? Step down from the Senate. So what he did is he pulled a Richard Nixon, which we are probably not going to get to, but he requested on TV that if the people of Massachusetts help him, help me decide whether I should remain in office or not. Call in. Write letters. And let me know your opinion. Should I or should I not remain as senator? So Senator Kennedy then requested that the people of Massachusetts help him 